Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our services here today. It's a blessing to be in God's house. I think we're all set uh, for those watching us online. And we're really glad that you can watch us here, as well as the folks here. We're glad that we can be here serving the Lord together. Let's uh, start by uh, singing praises to the Lord and let's give God the glory as we sing for the Lord today. Uh, one of the blessing things that we can always remember that no matter where we are and how we are, we can always be grateful for the service of the Lord. So for those watching us online, thank you for joining us. And for those who are uh, here today, thank you for practicing your social distancing. And uh, I think we're ready to sing. How about that, Sister Redna? Are you ready to sing? Let's sing for the Lord because we certainly need it today. All right. So let's have a word of prayer. Or let's start by singing and then we'll ask the Lord. Uh, we'll call upon the Lord for um prayer afterwards, right? So let's sing our first song today, When the Battle's Over, When the Battle's Over. We'll sing, When the Battle's Over. Let's sing. Am I a soldier of the cross, a father of the Lamb? And shall I fear to own his cause or blush to speak his name? When the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown, yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shiny crown. And when the battle's over, in the new Jerusalem Must I be carried to the skies on flowery bed of ease While others fight to win the prize and sail through bloody seas And when the battle's over we shall wear a crown we shall wear a crown, yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shiny crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Sure, I must fight if I would reign in victory, Lord. I'll bear the toil, endure the pain, supported by thy word. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. We shall wear a crown, yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and shiny crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Amen. Great singing. We'll sing our next song. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. We'll lift on high. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Let's sing. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss From victory unto victory His army shall he lead Till every foe is vanquished And Christ is Lord indeed Stand up, stand up for Jesus The trumpet call obey Yes. 
say ye that are men now serve him against a numbered foe let error and danger and strength to strength the pose on the last stand up stand up for jesus stand in his strength alone the arm of flesh will fail you ye dare not trust your own put on the gospel armor and a watching unto prayer where duty calls or danger Father God in heaven, Lord, we're glad to be in your house today, Lord. Uh, Lord, with all the things going on around us, the activity, I pray, Lord, that we forget not to uh, put you first. I pray that we give you a priority. I pray that we lift you up. I pray that you just let the word of God speak to us. Uh, we need you now. So I pray that you bless us now. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Just go right into the announcements. Thank you for joining us on our indoor services. And thank you for those watching us on the stream, uh, whether it be on YouTube or on Facebook. We're glad that you are here joining us live. I hope the Lord blesses you, and we're glad that we can be here in our indoor social distance services. Okay, uh, a couple of the announcements for the social distance services. I've been mentioning this, and we're just going to keep reiterating it. And so far, it's been working. Everyone has been doing really well. And so far, from what I hear, no one's catching any sickness. And uh, I took a test not too long ago, and I've been negative. And so far, nobody here has been uh, tested positive, which is a blessing. And I think that's God's answer to prayer because we're practicing our social distancing. So remember to do that. And uh, here's some of our rules for that. you got to practice our social distancing by face coverings must be used. you got to wear them and restrooms one at a time. No more handshaking. Maintain six feet apart, and no food will be served. And if you're sick, please stay home. Our next service will be in 11 o'clock. That'll be streaming on YouTube and Facebook, and then also 2 o'clock after that. Our church anniversary celebration, our 24th anniversary, will be next Sunday. Next Sunday. Uh, bring, uh, invite your friends. Let everybody know that we're celebrating 24 years and the Lord's faithfulness to us. And uh, here's our guest speaker, Pastor Barrow. He'll be preaching for us this Sunday as well. Continue for our church building. I have some uh, news about that. We'll get going, and I'll let you guys know that in the afternoon services. Okay? Continue to do your tithes and offerings. You can do it by Zelle at 626-927-8712, and you can mail it to the church. All right? Uh, that'll be for our tithes and offering. And also, uh, I want to remind you that prayer still works, and these are specific prayer requests that we're praying for. We're praying for the anniversary services next week. Uh, we'll continue to pray for Sister Ted's healing. Uh, I spoke with her yesterday uh, in regards to what their treatment plan is, but we need she needs your prayers. And, uh, and uh, prayers are what is going to make it through. Uh, when we pray to the Lord, uh, we seek his diligence. We seek his strength. And uh, you won't get it if you never ask. So we need to call upon the Lord for strength and guidance for that. And then also pray for baby Aya. I finally found out the name, the baby name, baby Aya. So from what I re from what I was told, she was uh, uh, had a stint placed, and she had to go. She was initially, I think, she was in Kaiser or UCLA, but now they brought her back to Kaiser. So it looks like the baby's recovering, but there's still a long road ahead. So keep praying for her, and uh, keep praying. If you have any prayer requests, let us know on the Facebook or on WhatsApp or on Messenger. Okay, let's sing our last song for this uh, morning. Let's sing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Uh, one of my favorite songs, Oh, How I Love Jesus. And let's enjoy singing this song. It's a great song, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Let's sing. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how 
I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me what my Father hath in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, make sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me on the last. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe, in whom each bears a sorrow bears a paw that may be low. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Because he first loved me. Praise the Lord. Let's get into the Word of God today. So let's open our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4, and we're going to go through verse 12. I'm going to see how far we can go. Uh, I have our notes all the way till verse 19, but I'm worried that we'll only go to, to 12 or 13. So, well, let's read 1 Peter chapter 4 while I get my, uh, my stool here, and uh, let's see how we are going to do it. And uh, let's enjoy what God has for us. Now, this is a really cool passage, part of it, uh, because it's kind of reiterating, and Peter's just double-checking and confirming everything, and I think it's pretty cool that he does that. Um, sometimes, uh, how, how many of you ever, like, let's say when you got saved, did you, get, did you hear the gospel once and get saved right away, or did it take somebody to keep telling you and sharing you over and over again? And uh, I think that's a pretty cool way that the Lord just keeps working. And I think we see here that the Lord is working again uh, in our lives and also with Peter and how he's just kind of reassuring uh, when people are going through difficulties. He's just re re reassuring the, the, the message and that God is available and God is there for you and for me. So that's a pretty cool, uh, a pretty cool um, way that God knows that we are in need. Amen. And he, he just kind of just layers in over and over again. So what a blessing that is. Okay, so let's read 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, and we'll finish off at uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. We'll finish off at verse 19, and we'll see how far we can get to this. I don't know if we're going to finish this whole thing, but let's enjoy and uh, let's just dig in the word. Uh, I like that we get to just, you know, sit there and just enjoy for these short period of time. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 through 19, the Bible says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is uh, to try you, as, through some, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be, able, ye may be uh, glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of the glory and of God resteth upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part uh, he is glorified verse 15 but let none of you suffer as murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters yet if any man suffer as a christian let him not be ashamed but let him glory uh, let him glorify god on his behalf for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And, it, and if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him, and while doing as unto a faithful creator. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll ask God to bless us. This is just a, a lot of good stuff that we could pick up on verses 12 through 19 of 1 Peter chapter 4. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, we love you, and I, we're glad that we get to be in your house today. I pray that we can uh, get encouraged by your word, but also, Lord, I pray that the word of God changes us, Lord. Uh, I know, Lord, that there's a lot of things in our mind right now, um, and even for me, Lord, there's a lot of things in our mind. Uh, but our Lord, I, I pray that we can kind of put them aside and just give you the praise and glory of this time. We love you. In your name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Well, this is uh, good to hear that we're seeing, uh, you know, God's goodness be reflected to us by his word. And uh, that a that's a blessing for us. How you doing, Jason? How's your hand? Did you have to go to the doctor? Do you want to go to the doctor? No? Okay. It's still connected, so it looks like it's going to be okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, can, you, can you make a fist or no? Oh, that's what happens when you, when you punch the refrigerator when there's not a good food. No. Uh, Brother Jason there, he uh, hurt his hand uh, skateboarding, right? Yeah, so, uh, so it looks like he was going to go to the doctor, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll hope you feel better, buddy. Um, and if you uh, fall asleep, someone just hit his elbow, uh, hit his wrist. So get a good, get a good elbow in there. You'll wake him up. But, uh, uh, but yeah, let's get back into the Word of God. And uh, it hurts to have an injury, isn't it? It's always bad to have an injury. Um, I, I say that because it kind of matches what we're talking about here. Um, verse 12, the Bible says, uh, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. I think it's cool because in the first part of verse 12, or verse 12, the Bible says, Beloved. He's not talking to enemies. He's not talking to people who he hates. He's not talking to people that he doesn't like. He's talking to believers who he cares about. Uh, if he's in care, he's in concern. Uh, the Christian life, there's other people who are concerned with you. You're not by yourself. Amen? You're not alone. And it's tough in this world to be all alone. Uh, there are a lot of people moving from California. Uh, when Dr. Baskin was coming in from Missouri, he was flying by or driving from on the 10 freeway, cutting through across you know, Mexico and Arizona and all that. And he said, uh, I'm surprised to see so many U-Haul trucks going the other direction, right? So he's coming to California and he sees big U-Haul trucks leaving California leaving California. And I, you know, I, I, I think it's a, an encouragement that people are leaving. Uh, why am I encouraged? Because uh, more traffic space for us? No. Uh, no, but I think it's, it, the people are upset about how California is working. So the more tax dollars leaving this place, the more they should realize that they're making big mistakes by, you know, making it too difficult uh, for other people. Uh, I think that's a smart decision on their behalf. But, you know, leaving where your family is, that's hard. Right, leaving where there's someone that you love where is is hard. Uh, people are moving to Utah, people are moving to Idaho and whatever. And if you're there by yourself, how difficult that is. I'm sure there's a big adjustment period, and it's nice to know when you get there, there's someone that you have some familiarity with, um, whether it be Christians or family. That that's a good thing to have. Now, when I came to America, I was born here, so uh, no problems <laughs> for me. But some of you came to America with nothing, with no, uh, no person to know, uh, maybe no even no money. Uh, or if you had somebody, you just had to work together with that person because that's all you had. Imagine going to a place where there's nobody there. How hard, hard would it be? How difficult would it be? Not knowing what to do, not knowing what to see, and, and not knowing where to go. Maybe not knowing the language all that great. That's difficult. But it's nice to have a brethren, someone who, who's there for you, right? And that's what Peter's saying, that you're not alone, beloved. I say this because I'm with you. You're not alone. I'm with you. Uh, you think that you're alone and you think it's difficult. I understand that it is, but you're not alone. I'm with you. And what's he saying I'm with you with? He's saying, you're beloved, don't think it's strange. Don't, think that, don't be surprised that what? That the fiery trial which is to try you. Not that you may fall into. Not that you're going to, you could perhaps see, right? Uh, when you're driving on the freeway a couple of days ago, I was uh, driving. We were way out in the near past, uh, in, in Fontana, past Fontana off the 215. And there was a sign. A really far, a big sign. You know one of those uh, street signs with the, that Caltrans puts out? It said, uh, two minute delay at the 110 freeway. Now you're thinking, okay, what does that mean? I was way out in Fontana, okay? So in Fontana, there's the 215, the 15, the 605, the 710, and, and the 110 and the 5, which is a good 30 miles away. 
And I'm thinking to myself, I see this sign that says here, two minute delay. Now two minutes, that, anything can happen in two minutes, especially when you're driving on the freeway. They're making a big sign, two minutes, something that's 40 miles away. I mean, if you're driving, you could definitely pick that up if you're going two miles above the speed limit. Now I say that not because, um, not because it's, it's funny, but it is funny, but I say that because it's upcoming. It's, it's gonna happen. There's gonna be a warning. Now you can easily avoid this by taking other routes or whatever, but the Christian life, Bible says here, don't be shocked to see that you're gonna get trials, that it's gonna come. Not that if it can come or, or, or there's a possibility it'll pass you, no. In your life, as a Christian, you will get trials. It's coming. Whether you like it or not, it's coming. And you can plan all you want to, to be problem-free. But the Bible says here, which is to try you. It's coming. And beloved, don't be shocked and don't be surprised. It's coming. I'm with you. Look what the Bible says. What type of trial, Pastor? It says here, the trial is fiery. Fiery. I don't know if that's one of your favorite words, fiery. You ever get a meal? Ooh, it's a fiery meal. Oh, well, I don't know if I want to be near it. I, I think kind of stay away. What kind of vacation did you have, brother? Oh, I had a fiery vacation. I, I don't think that's a very pleasant sounding word. Is it to you? Now, the Bible's saying here that it's fiery because expect it to be noticeable. Expect it to be noticeable. Expect it to be heated. That your temperature is going to rise. Sometimes your temperature rises because the temperature around you you're getting discomforted. Or sometimes your temperature is rising because you are what? A little active, right? Yesterday I was, uh, had the privilege of helping somebody move, going up and down stairs and things like that. And the first time I went up and down the stairs, no problems, but the more I was doing it, the more I was starting to what? Perspire off my brow, right? You're getting warm, you're getting heated. And I had a glass of water, I drank the glass of water like nothing, because you're getting heated. The Bible says the trials that you're going to have, they may burn some calories. How about another way that you get heated? You get emotional. You get angry. What do they say? You have a hothead temper, right? When things aren't going your way, you get frustrated, you get flustered, and your head gets to be a little what? Heated. Notice that these trials that Christ are giving to us. He says, hey, don't be surprised that you're going to get heated. You're going to have a lot of stress. You're going to have concerns and it's just going to make you overwhelmed. He says, don't, don't be surprised. Don't be shocked that you're going to get the trials. It's going to happen to you. No matter who you are, where you are, you're going to get the trials. But I think of it's another thing about the fiery trials. I think of the word smelter. You guys know what smelting, smeltering, smelting is? It's like the process when they get a gold jewelry and they melt it down to remove, to remove the impurities, to make it pure, to make it clean. I remember seeing a picture of gold and it looks, doesn't look all that great. I remember seeing a, a, a gold that's about the size of your hand that's unrefined. And it kind of looks like any other one, other rock out there. Just a little bit of a coloration. Nothing special. But you know what? when it's become special? When it gets broken down. And that heating process will melt the gold. And then the impurities will rise up. The dirt, the carbon, it'll rise up. And then the refiner will take that off the top. And when the gold cools down, you'll see a pure cleaner, better, shiny. Some of you here are wearing gold today. How costly. Well, how do you get that? The Bible says here, it's through the trials. Through the trials. Through the trying of your life, the Lord is saying here, you're going to have this heat. It's going to be fiery, but you're going to get through it. Let's talk about this, how some of the trials can where they come from. 
how some of the trials come from. Well, number one that we can clearly see in this passage, uh, these are new Christians in a world that's unsaved. A completely unsaved world. And not only are they unsaved, but they're also not tolerant of the gospel. We see here that Peter was telling them, you're in a new world of Christianity. And, and for us, we've got the blessing that Christianity has been around for many years, built on the backs of those who sacrificed tremendously. Uh, having a Bible is a privilege. In, in many parts of the world, it's a punishment. Right? Many parts of the world, the Bible is a punishment. But we see here, this was a time where the Bible or the Word of God was a punishment. It changed your life. Uh, it changed your life not only through your family, but through your relationships with your friends and your community and life. It's completely separated, completely different. That's the punishment. And they were talking about here the trials that the world is going to attack you because of who you are. Now, I wish to say that this only happened back in the Bible times, but it's, it looks like it's going to happen now. It looks like it's happening now. Christians are being punished for being Christians. Right? Churches are being punished for meeting and worshiping. Is that not happening? It's happening. But when the Lakers win a championship and riots are thrown out, hey, just celebrate. You have the freedom of speech. But when Christians come on, isn't it along in the same exact time of the freedom of speech with the freedom to, to meet and the freedom of religion? Same thing. In the same of the First Amendment. But when, when, the, when they're protesting out there, hey, do what you got. It's, it, it's a constitution. But over here for us, oh, no, 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 not anymore. Now, I understand and we know the, the certain parameters and what day we're living in, but it could get worse. Can it change? Absolutely. The men loves darkness rather than light. It could happen. Something could happen. I'm not saying that it will, but just because we have freedom today doesn't mean we're going to have freedom tomorrow. Right? And we're being persecuted for Christians, Christianity's sake. For Christianity's sake. And for that, God says, hey, you're suffering for me? That's okay. The world loves darkness rather than light. Let's go to our Bibles to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Jesus Christ is talking here. Oh, I gotta go fast. I got still got a lot to do. John chapter 15, verse 18 through 20. The Bible says here, John chapter 15, verse 18 and 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute who? You. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. See? See? The world doesn't love Jesus. And we love Jesus. We should come to expect that trials will come from loving Jesus. Not from the Lord himself, but the trials will come from this world. It'll happen. It'll happen. And later on, we see that Christians, you need to rejoice in that trials. Rejoice when that happens. Why? Because God is pleased that you're standing up for him. You're glorifying him. So we see that some trials, the, the heated, the stressful, the smeltering, sometimes it comes from the world because we're following after God. We're following after God's principles. But also sometimes trials come because God wants you to go back to him. He wants, God wants you to go back to him. Uh, when my son, Levi, you know, three years old, is walking towards the electric socket with a fork and he's going to walk into it and, and stab it, what should I do as a parent? Hey, buddy, don't do that. Hey, little guy, don't do that. Or, hey, good job. No. <laughs> Cheer him on. Go, 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 go. No. What do I got to do? I got to say, no, stop, get out of here, spank his hand. Why? Because I know there's danger. 
the movement he makes. Now, certainly the spanking of the hand isn't nice. Certainly getting yelled at isn't nice. But what? There's a bigger danger. Am I right? There's a bigger danger. Let's open our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you guys still here? Amen. Okay, I want to make sure. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 5 through 8. The Bible says here, Ye have, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which uh, speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not that thou the chastening of the Lord, nor fate when thou art rebuked of him. So the chastening is that, that, that spanking of the hand. The rebuke is that yelling that, hey, watch out, stop that. Verse 6, the Bible says, for whom the Lord loveth. What does the Bible say? He chasten." And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If he endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all of our partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. We see this. It's an interesting thing that when you are going and God spanks you, when you're living and you're not following the principles of God and God delivers his hand of blessings, but the blessings are forms of chastisement and rebuking. Now, those aren't words that we, we all like, but you know what? Those are words that we need to hear. Am I right? We need to hear that sometimes. Well, God, why are you giving me this? Because I love you. I want to make sure you're on the right track. I don't want you to go the wrong direction. That chastisement is what God says here. Notice here in the scriptures, the Bible says here, my son, my son. Notice he also says here, my little children. He's showing because he knows more than us. He's saying these words of affirmation to let you know that I love you. I'm here for you. I know more than you, amen? Aren't you glad God knows more than you and I? Yeah. And when we're going through that chastisement, look at the Bible says here, don't faint, verse 5, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Nor faint. And then the Bible says here, in verse 7, if ye endure several words of, you can handle it. You can do it. Endure it. Stay with it. A lot of times when we have trials, we want to just get rid of it, just give up. Say, I don't want it, I'm done, I quit, I'm out. At your workplace. Now for me as an, a parent, you know, I, I, when I used to go to downtown, take, you know, two hours there, two hours back, you're tired. And you say, I quit. Well, if I quit my job, who's going to take care of the family? As a parent, you kind of understand that, am I right? You deal with that just so that you're... You deal with your, your family. This quitting notion, God doesn't reward that. He's not rewarding when you quit, especially when you're being chastened. Notice the word, the chastening, it's something that's known. It's felt. It's not just coincidence. You guys ever have any coincidences before? I remember uh, when we were in the Philippines, my wife and I and a little Allie were in the Philippines for the funeral of my uh, my grandfather-in-law and we're in the Philippines and we went to this mall that I'm not even familiar with and I happened to see uh, somebody I knew there and the person who I knew is like I saw the person I'm like wait a minute why are they here they should be in America right so I didn't even say hi I just looked and they looked at me and I'm looking at them this is before the mask and I'm thinking well why are they here so we left and I moved back home to America and a couple of months later I saw this person I said, hey, just wondering, were you ever in the Philippines in, in this time frame? He's like, yeah. And she said, were you ever in the Philippines? He's like, yeah. Did I see you at the mall? I was like, did I see you at the mall? And we're like, yeah. What were you doing there? What was I doing there? I have no idea. And it was just like, wow, that's a weird thing to see. Now, I consider that as just a strange coincidence, right? That's a strange coincidence. Oh, but how about this? I go home and I see my wife at nighttime. 
And I wake up in the morning from my sleep and I see, oh, there's my wife. Hey, what are you doing here? She's like, what are you doing here? No, that's not going to be a coincidence. We both live there. That's not a coincidence. Uh, the next day I go to sleep. She's there. I wake up and I see her. You're back? That's not going to happen. Why is that? Because there's no coincidence. You're known it's going to be a full thing. Now, would it be weird I wake up and then it's somebody else? Yeah, that would be weird. It's like, what are you doing here? Donald Trump, get out of here. No, uh, that'd, be, that'd be really weird, right? What would you do with my wife? What are you doing here? Right? That would be strange. Or if I woke up and I'm, I'm in the middle of a field somewhere, right? that would be strange. See, we look at the scriptures here and the Bible says here, you're, the chastenings, you're, it's not strange. You're going to know it. You're going to feel it. And you're going to know why you have it. Because you're running from God. You're running away from God. You're going to feel it. You're going to know it. It's not pleasant. And it's made to not be pleasant. It's made to not be pleasant. It's made to be harsh. It's made to be bad. It's not supposed to be sweet. It's supposed to be difficult. The father loves his child and he wants to protect his children. So he will chasten them so they can go back to God. But the beautiful thing is this. Look at verse 6. The Bible says, For whom the Lord, look at that word there, love it. God loves you. God loves you. I love my son, but I don't want him to go into danger. God loves you when you are chastened. So endure it. Why? Because his love is going to take care of you. His love is going to provide you to bring you right back. But the more you keep getting that fork and you're walking towards, 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 eventually he's just going to say, fine, do it. If you don't want to listen to me, fine. You're going to experience it. And when you experience it, I'm going to be there to, I'm going to, be there to say, I, I was helpful. I could have helped you. I told you so. What happened? Right? So we see the trial. The first one is the trial because you're righteous and the world doesn't like you. Second, we see that you're not being righteous and God wants to bring you back. And here's the last one. Uh, let's go here. Uh, sometimes God gives you trials and unknowingly or unwillingly you don't want them and you're not doing anything wrong, but God gives you trials. For this reason, let's go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. You guys still here? All right, look at verse 3 and 4. Uh, the Bible says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let's just look for verse 5, because I think it's a good verse. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and abate it not. And it shall be given him. I think this is a beautiful passage of scripture that it shows that sometimes you're going to be tried just to get better, to be perfected, to be perfected. Whenever you do a test, I was showing my students in the Bible college or their grades for the test. And one person had this face of, ah, I got this, I'm doing well. And I looked at it and I said, You got an 80. This isn't well. You've missed 20%. It's, yeah, but it could have been a 50. It's like, yeah, but that's not, you, you don't strive to barely pass. You strive to what? Get hundreds, right? I think we should try to get hundreds. Amen? Students? No? No? Yes? Students? Don't you want to get 100? Yeah, right? Try to get 100s or A pluses or or stars. That's the goal. Not to barely pass. It's to get hundreds. Let me tell you, we see this in the scriptures uh -huh. that the trying of your faith worketh, may work, and may be perfect. That you're going through hardship so that you can be perfected. Now, you don't like it, but the ultimate goal for the Christian, the ultimate uh, sacrifice and the ultimate thing in our life is to fully be reliant on a God who loves you. And sometimes when you don't have trials, you're not reliant on it. Am I right? You're not reliant on it. I remember back, uh, boy, this is before Luke was born. Uh, 
I was on the 57 freeway and I got a flat tire. I got a flat tire. Now, I, back then, if you remember, I had a big, I had a truck, a Toyota pickup truck, right? And uh, in the back of my pickup truck was a tire, like a big, not a spare tire, like a full tire in the back of my pickup truck. So I got the flat tire, dig, 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 got on the side of the road of 57, and I go to the back of my trunk to see the tire, and the tire's not there. I said, wait a minute, where's the tire? Where's the tire? I look underneath, the tire's not there. I remember my mom and dad used the truck, and they went to Costco, and they took the tire out. No tire there. Now, when you're at Costco, and then the, the wheel isn't flat, you don't worry about the tire, right? But when you actually really need it, that's when it should be there. Am I right? Yeah. I mean, guess what? I didn't have no tire. I had to call the pickup truck. I had to call the tow truck. I, got a sa I sat out there. I was frustrated. And come on, I got no tire. That's when I had to, if, if you remember Pastor Conway, he was staying at our house. I said, Pastor Conway, can you go to the garage? Okay. Do you see a tire on the ground? Yeah. Can you put it in your car and pick me up? <laughs> but you know what? Christians... The trying of your faith, the trying of it will make it a perfected work. I say that with that story, it makes a lot of sense because when you really need it, when you truly rely on God, you'll really experience that he's really there. And you don't care about God when you're out in trial sometimes. You worry about your finances, but you don't worry about God. You worry about relationships, but you don't worry about God. God should be our number one. And when we're having trials... That's God saying, okay, let me be there for you. Now, does that mean that you're never going to have heartache? No. Does that mean you're never going to have sorrow? No. But that means you are making God pleased by completely relying on him. Oh, Christian, Christ is trying to perfect you. And the way to be perfected is because of the Lord. We can't be, we're not perfect. We're horrible people. But God's the one who provides. Look at verse 12 here in James chapter 1. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Blessed is the man. We ask the Lord, please bless us. Well, how do you get blessings? Endure temptation. Endure temptation that is tried, that you are being put to the fire. Endure it. Oh, Christian, let's be aware that that's how to get blessings. But look at the next one. He shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised him. Now, the crown of life is something you don't get here, but you get in heaven. You get it in glory. You get it in glory. A couple of days ago, I was cleaning the side of my refrigerator. You know, that's where you put coupons and little magnets and things like that. And then I saw my daughter or son, somebody had a coupon for free bowling. They got it from uh, making honor roll. Oh, I love bowling. Does anybody like bowling? I like bowling. My kids love bowling. And I think, oh, I could use this. And then I looked at it. Not expired. Awesome. We could use this. But then I remember we're living in a pandemic and all bowling alleys are closed. I'm thinking, what good is this free bowling ticket if I can't use it, right? Can't use it. Now, I say that when we get to heaven, we're going to have an opportunity to give back to God, right? You give back to God what you've done on this earth, whether it be wood, hay, or stubble, gold, precious stones, or these crowns. And then you will lay it at his feet, saying, Lord, thank you for what you've given to me. Now, the crown of life shows royalty, ownership, earned, and you give it to God. No, oh, what a better feeling. Well, what would be a sad feeling that you don't give anything to God? That's the same time when the Bible says that every tear shall be wiped away. Why are there tears in heaven? Remorse, regret, that you didn't get to give God. You didn't get to be there for God. Your, lost one, your, lo your loved ones are lost and they're in hell. That's why God wipes the tears away. I say that to this. The feeling of enduring temptation now will be a benefit and a blessing for all of eternity versus 
quitting now, and when you get to God, you can't give him anything. That feeling of failure. I'd rather feel like a failure now than to feel like a failure for the rest of my life. In heaven. How long is your life in heaven? Forever. You want to feel like a failure for the eternity? Wow. That's why God wipes the tears away. Oh, Christian, the working, the trying of your faith, it will bring patience. It gives an opportunity to be blessed. Let's keep going on. We're running out of time. When you are in that place of enduring and chastening, and you do it because God loves you, and you want to show your love back to him and being patient, encouraging him. Oh, sometimes, and we'll, I'll, I'll kind of briefly touch this because I'm running out of time, sometimes you're in trials because of your own mistakes. Right? Your own mistakes. I should not have done that. The bad thing would be say, I never did anything wrong. No, you made a mistake. Accept it. Deal with it and move on. So far, in America, I feel like there's so many people who don't want to own up to any mistakes. To own up to any, any mistakes. The Democrats are blaming the Republicans. Republicans are blaming the Democrats. There's nobody's perfect. Everyone's blaming each other. Right? We see some bad things happening in, in L.A. Uh, on the streets. Oh, it's because the police. Oh, it's because the criminals. Oh, it's because this. Ownership. Take some ownership. There's no ownership anymore. If you have a mistake, own up to it. You have a trial, it's your fault. What do you do? Deal with it so you can move on. But a lot of people will make the same mistake over and over and over and over and over and then they expect different results. That's the clear definition of what? Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. If you keep messing up, stop. You don't have to. Amen? You don't have to. Because you're just living through a trial based on your own efforts. Stop. Make it better. Let's keep going on because I'm running out of time. Look at uh, verse Peter chapter 4, verse 13. We're gonna, so we, I said we got the two verses, amen, of First Peter. Are you guys okay with that? You're like, Pastor, I want to learn more about First Peter, but you're only going two verses at a time. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's keep going. The Bible says here in 1 Peter 4, verse 13, But rejoice in so much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Now, the first verse talks about there's going to be fiery trials, and it's coming upon you, and you're going to think that it's strange, but it's not strange. But we see a complete flip on this verse. Look at the first word here, or verse 2, But rejoice. Wait a minute. I'm having fiery trials, God. I'm having burning problems. I'm sweating. My, the heat is on. How can I rejoice? Oh, the Lord says, but rejoice because ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that you are with Christ. You're not alone. Boy, it'd be really hard to be all alone out there, isn't it? Think about Peter. Let's change the scenario of Peter. Jesus walking on the water and Peter was walking on the water and they were together. Pretty safe. But what if Jesus wasn't there walking on the water and Peter's all there by himself walking in the water? What would have happened to Peter? Immediately sank. But because Jesus was there, what happened? He was able to walk. It's nice to have someone who's on your side who knows what they're doing. Yeah. Am I right? Who knows exactly what they're doing. Having a tour guide, maybe someone who can help you. I remember one time as a kid, uh, my parents never let us go to the arcade. And if you don't know what an arcade is, it's a building where they put games inside that you have to put a quarter in. Nowadays, kids don't know what an arcade is. It's a, an arcade is what? What's an arcade? Uh, you, you go there with the quarters and you, you, you sit around and play there. Uh, well, one time my cousin came to town and she was much older than I was. And normally my parents would give me like $2.00. Now, that really depends on how many games you can play. You know, Street Fighter was two quarters. So right there, that's a fourth of your money. And back then, you, you, each game cost, right? You know, so I wasn't very good. And whenever we go to the arcade, you cut your money, it's gone just like that, right? Well, one time, my cousin, who was much older than me, her mom gave us $20. Now, $20 is a lot of money, amen? Yeah. Some of you kids don't know that. Like $20, that's, the, that's what I use 
just for my snack at school. I thought $20 is a lot of money. So we would go to the arcade, and she took me in that $20. I'm thinking, when is this money ever going to run out? We're rich. We can play as many games as we want. We were there for like two hours. It was an amazing feeling. Someone was with me who could, take, who could pave the way, who showed me where to go. I look back at the Christian life. You're going through some hardships. Don't you want to have someone who's with you, who knows what he's doing? Who's along with the ride? Who didn't just abandon you? Let me tell you something. Your family's going to abandon you. Whether you like it or not, they will. One day. Hopefully not. Your coworkers will abandon you. Your loved ones will abandon you. But does Jesus? No. He's always there. Well, pastor, I'm going to the fiery trial. Rejoice because Christ is with you. Rejoice because Christ knows what's going to happen. Rejoice because Christ has overcome this world. Oh, Christian, if you're in suffering right now, you have to stay with the Lord. Christ is with you, but does that mean you can run away from Christ? That does. You can run away from Christ. How, how can you go through trials? How could you run away from Christ? Be sinful. Sin. Be angry. Be bitter. That'll definitely remove you from Christ. If you're going through those hardships, keep Christ with you. Stay by his side. Be faithful, ever more faithful, because you know that he'll never leave you nor forsake you. But when you add the world to it, that just adds more trials. That's just like adding oil to a fire. You're just making it worse. The Bible says rejoice because Christ is with you. And then look at the bottom verse part here. When his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. There's two words that glad means that you're satisfied. You're satisfied when you're with Christ. And look at that last word there. Exceeding joy. Now that gladness comes because you are aware that you're missing some problems. That you've gotten the blessings. Look at the word exceeding joy here. That it means that it's revealed. That you're aware of it. Sometimes you just you feel good for whatever reason. But the word exceeding joy means not just a little. Not just a little. You jump for joy. Christians, when was the last time you jumped for joy? You were so excited. I, I look at Levi when it's his birthday. We got him a gift. He jumped for joy. He's like so excited. With a cupcake, he's so excited. God is telling us when you're through hardships, you could jump for joy because God is with you. Oh, Christian, those jumping for joy moments don't happen every day. They don't. But I wonder why not. Why can't it happen every day? Well, maybe because we're not with the Lord. Maybe when we have trials, we're bitter. Maybe when we have trials, we give up. We make it worse. Oh, Christian, we see some beautiful passages of Scripture that when you're going through some trials, rejoice in the Lord. With that word rejoice, it means to cheer, to have courage, to move forward. Not just to stay in one place, to keep going. Oh, Christian, as we close, and I'm going to close my Bible and everything, let's not mistake trials as something that we don't want. Accept that you have trials. Understand that you do. But you know what's better than having trials? Knowing that Jesus is right there with you. Sometimes it takes a trial for you to remember that. Hey, if you're making your own mistakes, get out of it. Get out of it. Stop it. Go to the Lord. He'll, he'll clean your way. He'll, he'll, the Bible says that he'll make your path clear. That's what we want. But you have to go to the Lord. Christians, Peter is talking about this trying, fiery, horrible, heated trials. Steamed trials. You don't like it. But it's good to be in a place where the Lord is. Remember those three boys, the Israelite boys in the midst of fire? And Nebuchadnezzar said, who's that other person with them? Oh, that looks like the Lord. And in that fire, they were safe. But everyone looked around. The fire was hot. Even it killed the guy. when They're putting him inside there. But when those guys were in a fire with the Lord, they were just fine. Oh, Christian, when you go through the trials, let's be reminded that we need to be partakers with the Lord.
I know that they're hard, but I'm so glad that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, I pray that we endure the trials, whether it comes from the world because of our righteousness, whether it comes because of our own problems, whether it comes from us just uh, making mistakes, or Lord, even the trials that we're not aware of and we're just trying to glorify you. I pray that we follow after you. And I see, Lord, that the words there at the end, it says rejoice when we have trials, but also be exceeding glad and exceeding joy. Happiness that is unattainable to the world, but only comes for you when we are exceeding joyful. I pray that you bless us now. Help us to follow your principles. Let me pray. Amen. Amen. We'll take a quick uh, five-minute break, and then we'll get right back. Thank you for following your social distancing. We'll see you all in five minutes. God bless. We'll see you, and you are dismissed. Amen.